it'd be pretty easy for me to stand up here and give you some pretty common advice. Do what you love. Follow your passions. Follow your dreams. I could tell a rags to riches story and inspire hope that all of you guys can achieve it. I want you guys to close your eyes for five seconds and picture in your head the thing that you love, the thing that you were born to do. Five seconds, begin. All right, stop, that's enough. <laughs> who saw it? Hands up. A few, great. And who's living that right now? A bit less. That's okay. Do what you love is a great concept. But, and, and we've heard the, the inspirational quotes from a number of famous people. Never continue in a job you don't enjoy, said Johnny Carson. Don't settle, said Steve Jobs in his very famous Stanford commencement speech. Now, I'm not here to deconstruct that idea because it's kind of already been done. Um, and there's some fascinating perspectives on do what you love that I've found and really taken on board. Uh, renowned businessman Mark Cuban and a writer Mia Tokamitsu have offered some interesting perspectives on this that I can quickly share with you guys. Tokamitsu argues that do what you love is a sign of socioeconomic privilege, and it ignores those who work hard in a job they don't enjoy for a benefit that's greater than, than themselves. Family, religion, social change. Cuban argues that you shouldn't follow your passions, you should follow your effort, because the positive results of any hard work from that effort actually become a passion. Now, I tend to agree with those points, but I'm pretty romantic. And I can get inspired by do what you love speech just as much as anybody else. And so with that in mind, I chose to study the most romantic, sexy, glamorous thing imaginable, accounting. <laughs> um, and what happened with that was I didn't, I didn't want to study it, I should clarify. Um, it was part of my degree in business, and I'll get to that later. But I was generally motivated to succeed in my studies, so I was motivated to study in accounting. But because of my personal circumstance, things actually evolved in a different way. My lecturer was pretty cool, so I was able to learn a bit better from her. I studied personal, I, my, my uncle Paul, he tutored me at his house and rewarded me with food and beer, which <laughs> as a student is like the greatest thing in the world. And when I wrote a worksheet out by hand, it was for some moving company or something, and all, all the numbers and calculations balanced out at the end, Oh, man, that was so awesome. I could feel that sense of accomplishment through my hard work. It was like a mountain climbing moment, righto? And I experienced the birth of a passion at that point, something that I never thought I would, accounting. Now, that was where the story of my accounting career ended, because I didn't study it. I didn't pursue it. And for a pretty common reason, we all love more than one thing. We shouldn't just follow one thing and expect to get eternal happiness from it. We can't all be the vice president of skiing, gardening, and video games at the Amnesty International Pancake Tasting Lab and Brewery. <laughs> that would be pretty sweet. <laughs> but, you know, there's no degree for that here, at least not this year. Um, so I've come up with a new approach, just an idea that I've been thinking about, about how I sort of applied my passions to my career and my study so far. And... I want to share that with you today, give you the definition, and two examples of how I've gotten to this point. Now, my new definition is called apply what you love. Now, do what you love kind of implies that you have responsibilities, but they don't really matter. That you can totally throw away any of that stuff that you have to do to succeed and get by, to just follow your passion at becoming an artist and you're going to make money. The money will follow, says a lot of people. Um, but I'm, I'm not necessarily subscribing to that idea because is it realistic? You know, everyone has responsibilities, everyone needs to pay the bills, everyone needs to do what they need to do and, and get responses out of hard work from that. And apply what you love is more like ch continuing to channel what you love into every aspect of your life, be it work or study or your free time, and giving it a permanent real estate in your mind so you can achieve a balance between the two. So. If do what you love is the mantra of the endless optimists and dreamers, then, and do what needs to be done is the banner of the realists, then apply what you love is like realist plus or optimist light, which sounds like a transformer. 
So, from there, if you can manage to apply what you love in your work or your study, you can actually get real-world feedback on how that could potentially work as a career, as a source of income. Righto? I mean, I've never studied the Japanese art of flower arranging, ikibana. That could be the thing. That could be my passion. I don't know. I've never been in that situation. But that's the key word, is situation. It's all about driving situation, situational awareness of where you are and where you can sort of make that leap and make those uh, strides into making what you love into a career. It's just applying it in a more strategic way. So I'll give you an example, the first example of how I was starting out. I love games. I was passionate about games. But that's me and millions of other people around the world. Being better than your brother at Mario Kart doesn't exactly make a good profile on LinkedIn. So how did I overcome this problem? How did I think, how can I apply these games into what I'm doing? Well, let's, let's go back a little bit, and I'll, I'll go through some of the decisions that went in my head. I'd better not study programming and artwork in the computer labs at lunchtime, because then I won't have any time to talk to girls. Or, I think I'll study marketing at university, because I did pretty good in economics, and it might make me more employable. Or, now that I've graduated, I'll take this dull marketing job because I don't want to travel with my buddies in Europe because I hate sleeping in hostels. You know, those aren't the most romantic decisions you could make. So how did I overcome the problem of, of pursuing my passion with games? During study, I wrote about games. I made films about games. When I was doing electives, I met up with my friends, studied multimedia, I made a zombie point-and-click adventure game that was shot in QT and it was like a zombie apocalypse, the, the uni had been overrun, which was pretty cool. And in my junior marketing jobs, I played game theory to some of the customer campaigns, which increased retention and loyalty. Now, nobody sort of realized that at the time. I was doing that independently, but it helped understand how a real passion can be applied in a workplace situation, in a professional environment. So when it, what ended up happening after that? I began applying what I loved to something that I wasn't in love with, but I was getting pretty good at, which was marketing. Right so cut to a few years ago, or I guess cut to right now, what's the result of that kind of situation? My job is a chief marketing officer, and I don't love marketing. I don't. I love marketing games. It can be that granular. No, you, you don't have to be passionate about every single facet of every single field that you happen to have an interest in. David Ogilvy, one of the most famous and influential advertising executives of all time, he never took on clients that he didn't believe in. He never took on products that he didn't think would be a benefit to the customer. And he used those products himself as well. I'm the same way. And I guess the second example of how I continue to apply what I love, what I do today, is a concept I call day one marketing. Now, when a game is being developed, the very first concept image is shown. I'm in there, really, really quickly. I immerse myself in the development process. I try and get my head around what the designers are thinking, what the programmers are doing, what, how the artists are, are creating their inspiration. And a lot of that stuff sometimes goes over my head, but I take it all in so that I can apply my love of the game development process, which I didn't know too much about until I joined Halfbrick, but I apply that to benefit my job as a marketer. And that's what I love about marketing, is when I can be excited about something. And when I can see the creation of a product from the very, very beginning, when the creators are so, so excited and they believe with all their heart that this game is going to be successful, that's like a waterfall effect. That trickles down to me, and then I can channel that excitement into passion for the consumer, for the player at the end. And they're excited about it too. If it was a crappy game, I probably wouldn't be very excited about it. And I was able to experience that myself with a game called Age of Zombies. I was able to direct the creative development of that game personally. This was a number of years ago. Um, but I was put in that position because of my encyclopedic knowledge about zombie stuff. <laughs> but also because, as a marketer, I identified that the plat a new platform at the time, PlayStation Minis, was in you know, a real need for mature content, for that the gamers could enjoy blasting some zombies. 
So I didn't just run around blindly evangelizing the zombie culture in the hopes that something would happen. I put two and two together and put a place where dreams and responsibilities and skills came together and a group formed around the momentum. And nowadays, Age of Zombies is in the hands of more capable people, but that was enough for me to get that satisfaction from what I loved and then still getting the, the even more satisfaction from doing a great job at marketing. And the one thing that I really hate, my worst nightmare, is when you see, uh, I read an article and it said, 80% of people hate their jobs, but should you choose a passion or a paycheck? I hate that. Those two are not mutually exclusive. There's balances and they change up and down all the time. You can't be 100% happy all the time, every day at your job. Sometimes I don't like my job. I guarantee all of you guys feel the same way. But it's about understanding that working hard, even when you're in a, in a difficult situation, can net a great result. I don't normally like mowing my lawn, but I still do it and I feel great at the end. Go play some video games, relax. <laughs> so hopefully that's given you guys some perspective on how I've kind of applied what I love in a strategic way to make it work into a career for me. And if you're to believe all of the do what you love quotable quotes and all of the, the famous individuals who sort of inspire people and you look at me from an outsider's perspective, I've achieved that. So I'm destined for eternal happiness. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, I mean, as we see, it doesn't work that way. You know, I, I need new, new goals, new motivations, new inspirations, just as much as anybody else. You gain a new perspective on the world when you learn something about what you love and when you learn something about what you're good at. I'll finish on one more thing. MasterChef. Obviously, everyone's seen that show. It's pretty great. It's super addictive. And it's probably not the food so much. I mean, it's good, but the food that really draws you in. It's the human stories, the people who have these great jobs. I was a lawyer, I was a banker, I was an artist, but I'm throwing it all away and pursuing my passion for a career in restaurant business, in cooking. And the reason I bring that up is because I've actually developed a passion myself for cooking as well in the last 12 to 24 months. And Basically, it, it, I developed that passion out of necessity. No one else was cooking for me, so I had to do it myself. <laughs> and I got pretty good at it. I'm not bad. And now I'm so proud to share the meals that I created with my friends when they come over. Righto? I'm not ready to profess my love for the kitchen and, and cast away the rusty shackles of video games. But how could I channel my new love of cooking into an into a appropriate path for my current career? I'll probably make a game called Zombie Chef. <laughs> Thank you very much.